Kia ora koutou. This is a video of one of the questions we looked at in one of the integration sessions in the DubC scholarship tutorials this year. It's all about finding the length of a curve when we're given um, some polar coordinate stuff. And it's actually a really straightforward question as long as you just work systematically. It's obvious where you've got to start. We just have to have a wee look at what our limits of integration are. So we've got the length of a curve expressed in polar coordinates given by this thing here. So it's one of these questions where they give us the formula and we have to apply it to a situation. So we've got two limits here and they're going to be angle values. We're going to obviously be working in radians. And then we have to figure out this thing here. And we have to find the length of the entire curve, r is equal to this, in terms of the constant a. So they've given us one um, example of this where the parameter a is 2 and it's drawn here. So let me just draw that loop. What we've got to use that picture for is to figure out what's the smartest way to do this question. And um, so what I did is I looked at, so each, as we move around here, we've got different values of theta. Right? So the easiest way to do this, to find the length, is to find this length here and then use symmetry and double it. So that bit of the spirally thing, I think it's a cardioid, but that might be wrong, is going to have um, theta moving from 0 here. And you can see that we've got 5 pi on 6 here, we've got 7 pi on 6 shown down here, and we've got pi hiding here if you see it. So s is going to equal 2 times the integral from pi to 0 of that thing there with respect to theta. The next thing that we've got to do is to figure out dr by d theta. Then we have to square this and square the derivative and start substituting. Right, so I'll do some of that quickly now. So r is equal to a times that. So dr by d theta is equal to a sine theta. So my curve length is equal to this. So here's what I'm thinking when I see this. I've got a square root. That means that this thing here under the square root sign needs to somehow be turned into a perfect square. Happily, I can already see a cos squared theta coming in here with a sine squared theta, so that's good. But I'm going to have a bit more stuff to sort out in this bit here. So what will I do first? Well, I'm going to take out the common factor of a. So we'll have 2a from pi to 0 of... Now, I can do that because I've got the a squared here and here. 1 minus 2 cos theta plus cos squared theta, plus sine squared theta, d theta, which gives me 2a times this integral. So um, 2 minus 2 cos theta, d theta, which is 2a So taking those constants out to the front over and over, and we're left with this, 1 minus cos theta, d theta. Right, but if you've been sitting in the scholarship sessions all year, you'll know that one of our favourite identities uh, is the double angle cosine one, and we can use that here, right? Remember, we're trying to make this thing in here into a perfect square. So think about cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, and it's equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Now we don't have cos 2 theta here, but we have cos theta. So cos of theta can be rewritten as one of these things. I'm going to want the one that gives me uh, 1 here that I can subtract. So cos of theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta on 2. So let's now make that substitution. Right, so this thing here, we'll call that i for integral. So i is equal to 2 root 2a. I bet no one's watching by now because you've all seen what to do. That's cool. Right, 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared theta on 2 d theta. So in some ways I think this question is really no harder than a level 3 um, integration question. right? Because now we've got root 2 sine of theta on 2 d theta. Okay, so 
I'm just erasing that because I made a really dumb mistake. Let's keep on going with this. So collecting up these constants again, we get 4a, and then my integral here is going to be cos of theta on 2, but it's got to be multiplied by negative, and then it has to be multiplied by 2. Right, so that's just backwards chain rule, right, because cosine differentiates to give me negative sine, but I don't want negative, I want positive. And then when I chain rule this part here, I get a um, times one half coming out. So we undo that by multiplying by the two. So that gives me negative 8a times cosine of pi on 2 minus cosine of 0, which is negative 8a times 0 minus 1, which gives me my final answer of 8a. So there you go. Quite a straightforward question, um, a really good one um, to get your confidence up early on in the exam if you see something like that where it's just really, really obvious how you should start and I think most of you would have seen all of those steps. Thanks for watching.